some people, let me pause. Let me say this. Some people's business IQ is not high enough to actually get results from free. And I don't mean that in a negative slight. It's, I'm not, it's no slight. Like you, you can develop your business IQ, but some people's business, you can get some people's business IQ is so high when they hear something, they know exactly what that person's talking about. All like, Oh, that's what's missing. Boom, 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 boom. Implement it. Get the results. They ain't got to pay for coaching. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast. What's going on, family? And welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. If this is your first time tuning in, tapping in, well, I want to let you know you're in you're in for a treat because this is first and foremost your number one source for podcast news, podcast how to's, and of course, podcast interviews. So w- without further ado, I want to go ahead and bring today's guest to uh to the stage. Uh he, he goes by Lev Hunter, but also he's known as as Mr. L V. And you know, he's helping people grow and monetize their IG for high ticket coaches and consulting. Brother LV Hunter, welcome. Welcome, brother. How we doing? How we doing? Man, it's a blessing, man. I appreciate the the honor of coming on and being able to share with you and your audience, man. I don't take it lightly. So I'm excited because something's good about to happen. I hope people are listening in and tuning in with pen and paper. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna have my pen and paper over here, over here as well. Man, but but LV, for for those people who this might be their their first time, you know, coming in, just coming in meeting you or, you know, this first interaction, just, just take, take a little bit and just, you know, go ahead, just share with the people, you know, who, who, who is LV Hunter? Yeah, man. So a guy who loves God, a son, um, I always tell people, uh, I'm a son who knows who his dad is and I really love people overall and just enjoy having a good time in, in life. But more importantly, digital marketer, uh, whether it's organic social or paid traffic definitely is my my thing but coming from being born and raised in flint michigan and, and now i'm down here in the dfw or the metroplex is what they call it down here in dallas but just a true flintstone and what that means is like we love to work hard and we love to to grind and hustle but like to do it the smart way not the hard way with no no toy but man i'm just a, a dude who loves people and loves serving other people who serve that's why i primarily work with coaches and consultants to to really help them take what they do and go to the next level as far as being able to get clients and that's high ticket clients so this is not your your um your typical run of the mill uh, coaching. So that's what I do. That's who I am, man. I, I'm just a, a lover of people and want to see people win at, at a high level. Man, I, I I love that. I love that. But but we can't we can't just brush past we can't just brush past Flint, man. I, I want you just to talk a little bit about like what was it growing up, uh, what was it like growing up in Flint? But then also you know just seeing what's happened over the past couple of years uh, in, in in Flint. Talk talk to us, LV. Take your time. Take man. your time. So growing up in Flint was beautiful at the time. Um, I think my generation or my age group, we were probably the last to really enjoy, I think, some of the glory days. Not saying that what it is now is not gloriful, but it was a time where all of our schools were filled with students, filled with, with, with kids. You know, we call it generous motors and, and the different other automotive companies was there. People were making money. And so growing up in Flint, it was violent. Right. They had had some level of violence. But at the same time, you know, it was just a great place to just, you know, have fun. I mean, I don't think it's any different than any other city here in America. But, man, it was heavy on sports. We're really big and and, and very being competitive and music and arts and and the entertainment uh, thing. Now, one thing people don't know about Flint, because when you say Flint, Michigan, now they think water crisis. And I'll get to that in a second. But if you really Google and you do your research on Flint, there's a lot of your favorite celebrities, a lot of your favorite athletes, some of your favorite Mm -hmm. um, just people, period, are from Flint, Michigan. I'll give you an example, right? So um, right now in the NBA, we have JaVale McGee, we have Monte Morris, we have Kyle Kuzma, we have Miles Bridges, and I could be missing some, so please forgive me if I'm missing any that's currently playing. We have Clarissa Shields, which we know her. She's the greatest female athlete of all time in boxing. She's probably the most decorated boxer outside of, I don't know, I don't even know who's probably better 
as far as being declarated than Clarissa Shields. You have Terry Crews. You have uh, now. You may remember this. Remember Bozo the Clown? What? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bozo the Clown, um, the trainer that played in in Rocky, um, the black guy with the ball head. He actually went to the same high school that I went to. Um, I mean, the list goes on. Bettine Cleese, uh, Robert Smith, uh, Morris Peterson, who played for the Raptors, um, Charlie Bell. Um, I can't think of the guy's name, but he played um, in the Major League Baseball and he only had like one arm. So he was a pitcher. He was super dope. Can't think of his name. I mean, the list can go on and on and on and on and on, but you will be surprised from such a small city how many great names have made it to the large stage and made a lot of impact. I mean, even now, I uh, just thought about it. Uh, Cardi B's and a lot of your favorite celebrities, Dentist, um, is from Flint. Um, singers, just the list goes on. I, I would be remiss. And please forgive me, those who back home, I, if I missed your name, please forgive me. Wow. Man, yeah. I had no... Oh, my goodness. That, I, like, I thought you were going to give me like... I thought you were going to give me like five people. You went like, oh, there's like 20. That's, that's impressive. Dude, like I that is, know. that, that, that is impressive, man, man. Yeah. And, and yeah. that was just something that I can off the top of my head. I mean, I, I can, especially back in the day, like seventies, eighties and nineties. I mean, just, just crazy good, um, talented people from such a small place, but now transition throughout the years, you have the water crisis, you have the economy and, you know, I call it the, the migration back to the South or back to different places. So the, the city went from having hundreds of thousands of residents to now really being shrunk down. And with that, you still have crime and then you have the water crisis on top of that. And it's just really, um, you know, you still have some of the greatness of Flint still there, right? It's still great. However, going through that water crisis, bro, that was crazy. Like, I don't think people understand how, how much, like you just use water and you don't think about it. Like, even now, I'm in Dallas, like, I only drink bottled water. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, during the height of the, the water crisis, I would travel. And knowing, like, that place probably don't have issues with water. Like, I didn't even brush my teeth with the water out of the faucet before when I was traveling. Man, that's, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's another thing that also just really hones in or helps us hone in on the benefits that we have being in, you know, being in a first world, first world country. But then just like you said, when you realize that you have those benefits and then they're taken away, then you're like, I never realized this. Yeah. I never realized that. So God, yeah. and, 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 and one thing that, that one thing that I'll just say that I didn't realize the water crisis in Flint was going at, I, I'm not even sure if it's completely solved now. You can, you can tell me if it's completely solved now, yeah. but like, a year ago, six months ago, I was like, this is still going on? Mm -hmm. Certain parts, yeah. And oh I think they're, they're still fixing on it, right? But the majority of people, mm -hmm. I believe, are, are, are good. But again, nobody's going back to drinking water <laughs> in Flint like that, right? I mean, we still water, you know, bottled water and things. So you still, and here's the thing, people don't take a thought of what it does to your mental and emotional health. Now, I'm speaking from someone who doesn't have kids. I'm speaking from someone who wasn't in areas that it was really hit harder. So my experience mm -hmm. is definitely more um, conservative than than someone else who probably had it, you know, worse having kids and and not being able to just get up and move and, and, and not having, you know, what they need. So one thing about Flint, and this is what I love about my hometown, for those who are watching from the crib, y'all know this is so true we do our best to come together and help each other out. Like it, it's, it's, I haven't seen it done like, you know, anywhere else, but I'm only used to that. And it's like when people were needing water, you see the, you know, the news reporting the water lines, Well, you didn't know I mean? People actually came together and made that possible. The volunteers who loaded cars with um, bottles of water or went door to door with bottles of water. You, you don't see even in dealing with the poverty there, people who need to get, you know, their food, right? There's a food desert there because you have such, you know, just craziness going on and people are still being very generous, still, you know, showing up every day and trying to do the best they can with what they have. And it's, it's not a city where you would go and see people head hanging down. Like we got pride. So I, I think for people who hear someone say I'm from Flint, they like, Ooh, <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa don't do that. <laughs> like, no, yeah, we, we, yeah. I mean, yeah, we going through it, but we got pride. 
we have pride. We don't we don't look down on ourselves, and nor do we want you. And we just had such a great, you know, um, stream of you know celebrities, politicians, and all those alike throughout those years come through and keep people uplifted. So that really helped um, a lot, and the people helped you know helped each other stay uplifted as well. Yeah, man, I, I, I definitely I definitely love just to just to hear that about. Of course, when unfortunate things happen, nobody likes to see those happen no but just the the power that comes from it the community that comes from it the growth that comes from it and as i was just listening to you uh lv just share then i started to think about how ultimately we look at community in the sense of a people neighborhoods and stuff like that but then we slide over and transition and, and look at like the coaching community, mm-hmm. right? And, and, I, and I know that this is, this is where you are. This is a space where you're, you're doing some, some, some great work, helping out you know, coaches and, and consultants. What makes one a high ticket, like what, what makes one a high ticket coach? What makes one a high ticket consultant? Mm-hmm. Talk, talk to us, LV, the people don't know. Yeah, yeah. Don't know. Well, the term high ticket really talks about anywhere from three to $10,000 or more for for you to get a client or to become a client so that's the door high ticket if i could make it as in brevity it's the entry way it's like how much are you paying to get coached you know to get a particular transformation so you can take someone who thinking of coaching or may even be a coach or consultant right now and like i charge a hundred dollars an hour and to some people that's a lot of money like a hundred dollars an hour they're like that's great. However, it's really not a lot of money when you look at the grand scheme of things as you start to really plan and project your coaching business, operative word business, not just you leaving a job and having and creating your own job or having a job and having this as a side hustle, because if it's a side hustle, you're happy with $100 an hour. You're happy with $300 an hour. You're happy with those type of numbers. But when you really start thinking of hiring, business tax, paying yourself, make sure you have money to reinvest into your business for other things like marketing or development and and, and those things, $100 an hour is not a lot of money. When you really think about it, $300 an hour is really not a lot of money. So the the cost of entry to be a high ticket coach or consultant, you want to look at starting around that three grand a month per client, right? So the client page, let's say you got a 90 day program is three grand for the complete 90 days. Some people may charge you three grand each month. The pricing structure varies. But one of the things that if you're thinking about getting into becoming a high ticket cultural consultant, my disclaimer would be make sure that you are able to deliver on the transformation that you say you deliver because people are paying a lot of money and that's their hard earned money. So we gotta be integrity, I mean, and be integral and also walk in excellence, right? So what is a high ticket cultural consultant? The person who charged X amount of dollars, three to $10,000 for the transformation that they promised to give their client. I'm, I'm glad you put out that disclaimer. LV, I've been seeing people, man. I've been seeing people, I've met people, came across some people, been on calls with people, mm-hmm. and you hear them upset and they're frustrated mm-hmm. because of the fact that somebody promised them something it's, it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like if we you know we take it back like to college or something and you know everybody wants the jays coming out and then you got a friend that work in the store they're like hey lv i got you on the jays they scan the box you take the box home the box was empty mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you paid for what was supposed to be in the box which is the transformation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. lv Yes. Where, 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 go, go ahead. Talk yeah, to I me. Talk to me. Go ahead. I love that because I'm, I'm a former sneakerhead. I'm about to get back into it. But here's the thing. I love that analogy. Love that analogy. You didn't check the box, check the box before, you before you paid. Mm. Right? So when people in this coaching space, you hear, you know, there are people who are out of integrity. That is there. But they don't last long. Or if they do last long, you get a width of it and should be able to detect it and do your due diligence to make sure you you don't get scammed or taken advantage of. So that's number one. I never put the scam or I never place on the people who got scammed. I put it on the, I mean, the people who do the scamming, I put it on the folks who got scammed. Why didn't you not do your due diligence? Number one, because those are the things that's in your control. Okay. That's in your control. So secondly, 
is that when most people say they work with a coach or a consultant and say it's high ticket and they didn't get what they thought they were going to get, did you do the work you were supposed to do to get the transformation? Number, all right. So it's number two, because a lot of you say, oh, I work with so-and-so and so-and-so and I didn't get any results. OK, well, what did you do? Crickets. So I'm, I'm real big at playing, not necessarily playing both sides, but playing what's right. And what's right is, did you do the work? And if you did the work, it, did they coach you on how to adjust to get the results? Because you're not a coach until what you say doesn't work. Let me say that again. Mm, You're not that a coach until what you do doesn't work. Let's take sports as an analogy. If I am a basketball coach and I run up this play and it doesn't work, what is my job as a coach supposed to do in practice? Work on why the play didn't work. Make adjustments or get rid of the play and put in a new one, right? So your more seasoned coaches, right, know how to make adjustments quickly. They know how to get data from you if you do the work to make the adjustments to prevent you from being a jaded client, one who felt you got scammed, because a, a coach who's operating in integrity wants you to get results. Anytime I work with anybody, I want you to make more money than me. I want, that's my prayer. That ain't just something I just say. I pray that. And somebody going, Lord, I want them to make tons more than I do. That, but that's me. That's my heart, right? So I'm going to do whatever it takes to get that result for that individual. But again, they have to do the work. And if and are they doing the work? And are they reporting back the data so the coach can actually say, hey, here's where you missed it. And I, and I do it all the time. I'm a coach. I see it. Hey, man, why is this not happening? The data is saying this, but on your end, you're not seeing this. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I did A, B, C, D, and E. Well, you did A, B, C, D, and E, and that's what's causing this from happening. Or you didn't do A, B, C, D, and E. Or you did A, B, C, and miss D, and now you're on the E, and you're trying to get to Z. So again, yes, people do get taken advantage of. But are you honestly, can you honestly say you did everything you were asked and told to do and didn't get the result? Or the transformation. That's why I say I say transformation because sometimes people promise you're gonna make money. And you may not make money, but you may become a better person, which will lead to you making more money down the road that you would not have had thus you worked with this individual coach. Does wow. it make sense? Does it make sense? I didn't know you decided to choose violence this afternoon. Oh, I'm all for it, bro. I'm all I for it. I didn't know you wanted to choose violence. <laughs> Bro, well, the reason I say it because people, you know, are quick to say coach scammed me or coach did this or I got taken advantage of. And I'm like, no, you didn't get taken advantage of. You just didn't do the work or you didn't ask enough questions or you didn't do enough because this is your hard earned money. Wow. You didn't check the box to see if the shoes was in there. You didn't even check the box to make sure the right size was in there. Mmm. You know what I'm saying? People buy a house Glory. sight unseen and then gonna get mad at the realtor. What? Ooh. Didn't get no type of uh, appraisal, no nothing, and they mad at the realtor. See, it's easy for people to spit out negativity and say what didn't work, what doesn't work, who doesn't work, but they never say their part because it's a two-way street. Phil Jackson was Michael Jordan's coach during the glory years. What if Michael never did what Coach Phil Jackson told him to do and they actually started losing more than Michael won? Michael can point and say it was Phil. Who would know? Besides the players, Mike and Phil. So when we go on social media and we vent or we go behind closed doors, DMs or whatever, and we talk with people and say, man, stay away from Coach so-and-so, start asking, well, what did you do? And this is no different in corporate America. This is no different in nonprofits. When you get a job, you know, so I always tell people, well, this is what I was told, and I also share it with people. When you get hired, the first person who comes to you and tell you negativity about the job, they're toxic. And they want to get you on their team. It's the same thing in coaching, bro. It ain't no, it's, human, it's basic human behavior. 
Nobody wants to take responsibility for losing out on $3,000, $10,000 or more. Because they don't want to look like they the ways. They got to blame somebody. I did everything the coach told me to do. No, you didn't. Did you show up to the calls early? Did you ask a lot of questions? And I'm not beating up on that person. I just want to make sure it's fair and equitable on both sides. Because again, you do have coaches who make these claims about the transformation you're going to get. And they're just off, off you know, off dates just, and, and, and it's just not real. Like I tell, you talk to me, don't tell me about six, seven figures. I don't, I'm not giving you $10,000 for you to help me make seven figures. If I got $10,000, I probably have a job that's making six figures. Just keep doing what I'm doing. Why don't I need two? So I don't, I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm just going on a little tangent here, but these are some of the conversations I have with people behind closed doors. I'm like, don't blame the coach. What did you do? It makes sense, man. It make it makes sense. I've, I've, I've seen some of those people, like I said before, of course, no, no name drops necessary, mm-hmm. None. but, uh, <laughs> None. Oh man. So, okay. So I mean, I just gotta ask you, LV, yeah. because we 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 we've seen here le- we've seen here lately, right? It seems that there's more platforms than ever popping up. Of mm-hmm. course, Instagram is here. Uh, you know what? Fan base, and you know the list goes on and on. You know the racket, all these other apps, and now they're creating the opportunity for creators to be paid. Mm-hmm. Like, where 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 do you see people dropping the ball? Because yes. Instagram, you know, I, I I believe I read an article that said Instagram has cut checks as high as like thirty thousand for mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. to 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 get paid, and I, I've received like a two hundred dollar check from Instagram. Yeah. But yeah. like, wh- where are people dropping the ball? Because they're like, oh, Instagram's paying, so what do I need to be doing? Talk talk to me, Elvie, because I know, I mean, I know, I know you know, I know you in these Instagram streets. Man, man. I'm, I'm, in in the, I'm in these streets, bro. So I'm 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 gonna give you an answer that you're probably not gonna expect. And I want you to follow me on this one because I want to make it make sense. If you were not making money on Instagram before the changes, you're probably not going to make money on Instagram after the changes. Just follow me. If he wasn't making money in the real universe, as my big brother Marquel Russell would say, you're not gonna make you not you know you're not gonna be successful in the metaverse. Hmm. Okay. Let me let me and let me give you the 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 the, the psychology of it here's what i'm talking about if you don't know how to sell before the these new changes how are you gonna do it now all right what what changed besides the opportunity did you did you learn something to to go along with this new change did you acquire a skill now that's that's now available to be monetized on the platform or any other platform because platforms pay you. What creators don't know, some creators get paid tons of money, tons of money from, the, from these platforms because they accumulated a large, excuse me, a large audience and they are putting out content that keeps people inside of their ecosystem. So that's that's been happening before all of these changes. So for me, that's why I don't get all excited about too many changes to platforms. I try to stay up to date. But if you were not able to sell before, what are you selling now? If you mm-hmm. were, if, 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 okay, as an example, let's take the Instagram Live badges, okay? Let's say they rolled it out today. Prior to today, you rarely went live. Now they have badges where you can make money. Now all of a sudden you about to go live every day and with an expectation of making some money? It doesn't work that no way. That's not how, that, that's... That's a archaic employee way of doing things. When I show up, I should get paid. But on the internet, it's not like that. On the internet, you got to build a relationship. You got to show value. You got to have people know, like, and trust you. And you should have been doing that prior to now so that when these things come available, it's easier for you to start making the money. And then here's the trick. Let's say you're the person who want to make money off, the, off live streaming, but you haven't been live streaming. But you want to, you serious. I'm about to go in. I'm about to start doing this. Mm, 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 mm. And then somebody who's been going live for three, four, five plus years on Instagram and has an audience 
that will spend money with them because they've been showing up, nurturing and providing value for years. They sell you a course. Mm -hmm. You buy the course because I want to make money like this person made money. Not knowing that they made money off of, they make it, their money is the reward for them staying consistent throughout the years when there was no money coming in. And they can only teach you that, but you don't have the skin in the game. After you complete the course, after you complete the coaching, you don't have the audience they do. They got 50,000 followers. They got 100,000 followers. They got 40,000 people on their email list. They're showing up at other platforms. They're running ads. And here you are hearing that they're paying out 30 some thousand. You want a piece of it. And I don't want to deter you, but let's just, just think it through. Let's just walk it through. Does it make sense for your expectation to be there? Hmm. So it's never, I'm trying to make money per se only. It's how do I position myself to where people like they're, they're begging to give you money. They're like, they can't wait to give you their credit card. And if right now you're hearing this and you, and you're seeing this video and you're like, yeah, but how, well, let me tell you how you start building relationships by showing up every single day. So again, if you want to make money off a live stream, I need to see you going live every single day. But they don't want to do that. They'll do it again. They'll again. they'll buy from the person who got all the followers and all that and get coached by them or get the course by that person and then not get the results. Trust me, I know I used to be that person until I was able to get behind the curtain and see how people move. And I was like, oh, that's how y'all did that. That's why it don't work for everybody. That's why it only worked for their friends who got an audience just like them. And those are their testimonial. And I'm not saying everybody is bad. I'm not saying every course and coaching out there is bad. I'm not saying that. But let's have expectation and understand these different features. So when these features roll out for you to be able to monetize your Instagram, hopefully you have been nurturing and showing up consistently to even be in the position to make money. It's like now that this feature is here, you haven't been showing up to work prior to that. And now you want to show up and get a check like everybody else who's been showing up. So I just want to share and then and, and also understanding that everybody, again, it goes back to integrity. I know someone, I, I won't reveal their name. They took a PPP loan and they one of their old accounts got hacked and they went from zero to just a gazillion followers in one year. Well, you don't know how they did that. And you think their content or its meritocracy that got them this audience. But it was a dollar, dollar bills. They paid to acquire people or acquire an audience. And here you are buying their product. I did it. That's how I found out. I was like, how was they doing? I just want to get a peek behind the scene. Right? Boom. And I said, oh. And you omitted a big chunk of your success in your course, in your teaching, in your ebook, in the $27 course that you share. But you make a lot of money off that $27 because a lot of people don't understand what I just explained. They haven't been showing up to work. And now that the opportunity to get paid is here, they wondering where's their check at. So yeah. Sorry. Mm-mm. Nah, you 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 good. You 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 brought the boxing gloves, you brought the Vaseline, and you brought your apron because you're in the kitchen right now. You cooking. <laughs> you you cooking right now. I, I just want to help. I want to give people the real. Like like Man. I want to I want to remove false expectation. I want to remove all that and because I was like that. I was that guy getting all the freebies and showing up to this master class and doing and I wasted a whole lot of time. Yeah, I got just I got the same information everybody else got and can can spew it out. But man, it, it don't you know if everybody doing it, it ain't no money there. Hmm. That's real. Well what so okay, you say you used to be the person. Well, what was the shift? Like what hit the switch? What made you, you know, make the, make the turn Man, if you, you know, were that person? Yeah. So my, my track is a little different. My track is a little um, different and I don't think it's, again, I'm giving the disclaimer. Most folks won't do that. They're like, oh, you just need to do X, Y, Z and you just like me. No, <laughs> I have been blessed to join forces with some people who do it at a high level 
and be behind the curtain and see how it actually goes down. How growth, growing an Instagram or any type of social media goes or actually having a business and all that. So my track is a little bit different. So I was able to connect with big bro, Mark Well Russell and, and Andre Gaskin and Sierra Say and Mark, Rochelle, the OG, and just Bianca and just so many other people, other coaches and those who work under the client attraction, um, client, client attraction university umbrella. And once I got behind the scenes, I said, oh, that's everybody not operating in integrity. Everybody just selling log, I mean, not everybody. Uh, some people are selling log games. Some people don't care whether you get a result or not. Some people, it's really a money grab. It's small, few, it's smaller those, but sometimes they can be the loudest, right? Integrity is quiet. Scamming or all that always is louder. Always, always. So for me, my track, and then also became a student. I became a student of marketing. I really like said, okay, this is my lane. I need to know this stuff. I need. I can't talk about it out of integrity and not be about it. So I started saying, okay, what books do I need to be reading? You know, who do I really need to be paying attention? Who really doing it? You know what I mean? On the low. <laughs> who really doing it? And, and that's my track. So if someone says, how do I transition? Understand that you, your expectations will not necessarily always be met with a login with a $27 course or like I'm putting together a $150 course, but that's for people who always say that they can't afford it. Well, I'm going to give you something, but you're not going to get everything. You're not going to, I would, you know, some people, let me pause. Let me say this. Some people's business IQ is not high enough to actually get results from free. Mm. And I don't mean that in a negative slight. It's, I'm not, it's no slight. Like you, you can develop your business IQ, but some people's business, you can get some people's business IQ is so high when they hear something, they know exactly what that person's talking about. Oh, that's what's missing. Boom, 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 boom. Implement it, get the results. They ain't even got to pay for coaching. But some people's IQ is business IQ is so low. Not there. I'm not trying to play nobody, but their business IQ is not where it needs to be to be able to implement off the free. And some people get the free and don't even implement. That's another conversation. And I'm sorry. Man. I hope I'm not sounding negative Nancy or bitter Betty or any of those things. I just want to I want to shock you. I want to grab you by your collar and say, this is why it's probably not working for you. You're not implementing off the free. You don't even understand really what you read on the free. And I was that guy. That's why I can say it freely. Man, nah, you, you don't you don't sound like you don't sound like negative Nancy. You, you, you sound like the co-host. So so you so you today's co-host of the episode. So man, yeah, you you got you definitely got permission to go in, brother. You got permission. You're, you're at home here. Yeah, I appreciate you're at home. that. Well, welcome home. Yeah, welcome Virtually to in. Yeah, welcome to Dallas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, so it, oh, okay, so I, I want to ask you this, LV, and, and I know you've been giving the disclaimers and everything like that, but let, let's say that there is somebody who's out there and they're just getting started on their quote unquote marketing journey. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, I'm the person like you. I've been getting free. I've been on all the webinars. I've been buying all the 1997 right. eBooks and everything in between. Where would you say is a good starting point of a marketing book for a, a coach who's struggling to get results, uh, but they want to, you know, they're, they're struggling to get results because they can't get clients. So yeah. like what, what's, what's a good start entry level for a marketing book? Oh man, this is, I, I'm, I've learned to love books. Books are the cheat code. Um, I'll share what I share with people is the big leap, uh, gay Hendricks. Mm. Um, definitely jump on that. Um, the war of art. The War of Art is another good book. Um, Outwitting the Devil. Okay. I ain't say nothing marketing yet. <laughs> because here's the thing. You can get the skill set, but if you don't have the mindset. And that's typically the, that's the, you, you ever heard the analogy like the elephant that got the rope on, the, on his foot and you put the stake in the ground and it's an elephant. He can easily just, but he never, Oh yeah. that was your boy. 
I was sitting there like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm getting all these cheap little logins, and I'm learning here. And then I said, let me invest high ticket into myself. Man, it was a, a ooh, it was tough. It was tough. I ain't going to front on you. I was like, ooh, it's a lot of money. Uh, but I did it, and it just opened my eyes. I was like, oh, my Lord. Now, you want a marketing book? Um, I'm not even going to give you a book. I'm going to tell you where to go, payadplaybook.com. <laughs> I'll just say that paid at playbook.com. When I brought, when I released my book, then that'd be the recommendation uh, for everybody. But um, if I could really give you a, a marketing book, because there's so many, um, I don't even know, bro. Like, and I don't even have my books with me. I don't even, so I would just normally just turn around and just point one out. But um, DM me. If you want a book recommendation, DM me at your boy LV or Instagram and I'll give you a book recommendation. Those who are listening or watching, because I can't think of one on the top of my head right now. That's good for someone just starting out. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I mean, you, you gave people uh, the, the, the start to a great library, though. Mm -hmm. So the, they need to check out them other books first. I need to look into the big leap myself. Bro, um, game changer. But really? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. 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 I, 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 this, is, this is probably like the third or fourth time I've heard. I've heard the big leap. So okay. And he has a part okay. two to it as well, which I need to go back and listen to again. Hmm. Okay. And let me pause. Let me okay. say that I just heard that. Like, go back over the stuff you've read before. Go back over your material. Don't just consume it once. Implement it once and think you're a master. Everybody who, and again, that I see, that I believe are doing it at a high level with integrity, they like, we just run the same play. We just do the same thing. We've mastered the, or we're mastering the same play. McDonald's is the same everywhere you go. Rarely is the menu different. Rarely. Why? They master their stuff. That's it. Wow, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring it back to something you said earlier. Phil Jackson ran the triangle offense with Michael. Kobe. He ran it with Kobe. He ran it with Shaq. He ran it with Scotty, and they got rings. N name a billionaire. Hear me out. Who or name someone who became a billionaire doing multiple things at the same time? Name an entertainer, rapper, who was rapping and putting out other types of ventures at a high level, and they all were successful. I'm not talking endorsements, right? I'm, let's use Jay-Z. Jay-Z's Rock Aware clothing line did not come out the same time as his first album. All the stuff, businesses you see wrapped around these people now, because they focus on one thing, and that's really difficult for coaches. Oh, that's difficult. They got oh, everybody doing challenges. I got to do a challenge. Oh, everybody doing text marketing. I got to do text marketing. Oh, I got to do that. No, you don't. You really don't. Just focus on one thing and become so good at that one thing that when everybody now want to come back to that one thing, you the top dog. Now you can command more money. Let everybody else jump on everything else. Focus on your thing. That's how you make a lot of money over a long period of time. What is Jeff Bezos known for? Amazon. Amazon. Where did he work before Amazon? Nobody knows because he didn't put that on the resume. It's just say Amazon. <laughs> where did where did um Mark Zuckerberg work before Facebook. I wish I could tell you. Name me the re the television stations Oprah Winfrey worked at before the Oprah Winfrey show. Only a few people would know that. You can Google it. Mm. I am just, you know. Man, say say this right this right here was a marketing master class i don't know if you knew it or not you said it before you called it before you said you said i hope you got your pen i hope you got your paper because something something amazing is about to happen you 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 caught you called it before but this is 
this 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 has been good, man. But L L V, man, I gotta I gotta ask you because you sure. know um you know my, my my show is called the Your Podcast Mentor Show. So why did you decide to start the L V T V podcast? So eight years in uh, public radio or not public radio, but uh, radio. So I used to be on the air. So that's where the L V comes from. So when I was on radio, your boy L V, even marketing the name. To be like, yo, I'm your boy. Like, I'm your friend. Listen to your friend. It's easier to listen to your friend than actually listen to a stranger. So I was everybody's friend. So I still had this bug to want to do podcasting. And I had a couple podcasts prior to this one um, that kind of fizzled out because, again, my mindset wasn't right. Didn't understand the push through the the failures or the frustrations and keep it going. And I just wanted to speak to coaches and consultants using the gift I believe God gave me, which is being able to, to quote unquote broadcast or communicate orally. And, you know, I just want to do it and I just love it. I, I enjoy doing it. I did a lot of interviews in 2021 and now we're slowly, well, just, just abrupt change. And now it's just me. We'll bring on other guests, um, uh, you know, as it permits, but podcasting is where it's at. It's, it's another underutilized marketing asset that, yeah, people are coming into it. And it seems oversaturated, but again, people who were just like me previously going to start these podcasts, are going to get really excited, get about 10 episodes in and quit. So I ain't tripping. I just got to show up. <laughs> uh, I, I, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you get, get ready to get out of here, but I want to have like a little bit of fun, a little, little, little quick segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like to just do a little rapid fire, and this is called the This or That Ooh. Segment. Are you are you ready? No, I'm not. But let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready, but I, don't, I I like to think too much, so I, I don't know if I'm that fast. Let's see. Uh, we I, I think you'll be fine. Here we go. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Instagram. But hold on. But hold on. Facebook and Instagram <laughs> ads though. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Martin or Fresh Prince? Why you do this to me? Martin, but ooh, Fresh Fritz was a killer. Actually, Popeyes Martin Chick-fil-A. inspired me. Chick Fil A, whatever, whatever you say again, Chick Fil A, okay. Chick Fil A. But and I don't even eat meat anymore, but Chick Fil A because I used to be heavy all over that. Yeah. But go ahead, Mar- Martin inspired you to what? Get a radio. Oh wow, wow. Yeah, man. Now that's dope. That's WZUP. Dope. Okay. What's up? It's the Varnell Hill Show. <laughs> it's the Varnell uh, Hill Show. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Man, that was funny episode two. Bro, episode. those episodes. Man, let's get back to this. Them yeah. episodes was hilarious. Let's get back to this. Would you would you prefer a big party or a small gathering? Oh, it all depends. I'm gonna say small gathering because I'm very private. Fair enough. And then cake or pie. Ooh, if it's my mom's German chocolate cake, yes. Pie. Yeah. No, I go cake. All right. Uh, there, there it is. There it is. Well, I'm, I'm gonna come back to you. I'm gonna come back to you with, with the final thought after I do this brief commercial break, uh, family. So you, you all know uh, that we have the training coming up, and this training is geared towards speakers, coaches, and consultants, showing you how you can ultimately establish your authority and how you can be able to generate leads even if you have a small following. So go ahead and go to yourpodcastmentorshow.com. Sign up for the free training. And now we're back to the episode. Brother LV, you've poured it heavy. You've poured it heavy on this show. You poured it heavy on this show, man. So I got to ask you, it's two final questions, actually. Mm-hmm. I'm with it. So one is, who's, who's one slept on podcaster that we need to bring on the show as a guest? Ooh. Do you want me to help you get him? Uh, well, I mean, if you know them, if you know, I'm, I, I just, I want to bring people on who, whose podcasts are slept on to just bring them on. We share the platform. Okay. Let's bring on uh bro, Marquel Russell. Okay. He does have a podcast, doesn't he? Yep. The school of client attraction. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's going to be a therapy session. Lord have mercy. <laughs> That's going to be a therapy session. I already know it. Let's get it. Okay. I'll put in the word for you. We'll talk off, off air. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. And then back back to you with the final thought. What's the final thought you you have for the people? Like I said, you you've dropped gems all over the place. But what's what's the final thought you have for the people? If you made it this long, this far in the podcast, I want to actually do one thing and one thing only. 
if you found any value, anything that was said that just sparked you, anything that inspired you or gave you an aha moment, if this wasn't a waste of your time, please do me a huge, huge favor. I want you to subscribe to this podcast that you're listening to right now. I want you to rate and review it wherever you listen to, to podcasts and do me a huge favor. This will make a black man blush. If you want to see a black man blush, prove to me that you share this episode with at least one person. I'm not saying post it on your social media. If you do that, praise God. But if you can share with one person you like, man, I think you will find value from listening to this conversation. I'll send you back a selfie of me blushing if you DM me on Instagram. So here's again, <laughs> if you found any value from listening to this podcast, subscribe to this one, rate, review it, and show me that you subscribe or proof that you subscribe or shared it. And I'll make sure I send you a selfie to prove to you that a black man can blush. And we'll go from there. Brother LV, man, I appreciate you taking the time to, to grace us. Well, it's, it's dope to know that, you know, you're in the city and, and you know, in the DFW. And I, I think that's why I think that's why your extra help came on th this afternoon just to just to give us a double portion on the podcast. So, Let's brother, thank it. you uh, for, for being here. Everybody be sure to follow your boy LV on IG. He's on IG. Your boy LV. Like it's, 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 it's just pretty. It's just pretty simple. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. But brother, man, thank you. Grateful for you. And we will definitely talk soon. Well, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. God bless you. Most definitely. And for all the all the listeners out there, you all remember that this is the Your Podcast Mentor Show, where we help you establish your brand so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Peace and God bless. Mm -hmm.